OK, I think we should probably start. It's one minute past 12 and we have a hard stop at half past 12. So welcome everybody to um, March's Newcastle Health Innovation Partners Lightning Talk. We're expecting possibly 100 people at this talk, so um, you're going to hear a few beeps as people join. I'm afraid I can't mute and talk at the same time. Well, I could, but you wouldn't hear very much. Um, so just please uh, ignore the, the beeps. They're, they're good beeps to have. So um, it's a great pleasure to to welcome Nina to to give this month's lightning talk, which is going to be very much focused on on the NHIP Academy and, and um, what we're doing in that space. I'm chairing today. David Byrne, um, our director, is not able to join us, so I, he's asked me to chair. Um, and I thought I would start off actually with just a little bit about NHIP. Um, I wasn't sure out of the 100 people whether everybody was going to be local and heard this before, but Newcastle Health Innovation Partners is our designated academic health sciences centre. Um, there's only eight in the UK. They're awarded after very stiff competition and we're designated for five years until next March. Um, what is an academic health science centre? Nina, if you could just move us on to the next slide. This is um, from Wikipedia. Um, they're not a British thing, they're an international brand, if you like. Um, and what you can see there is an academic medical centre, sometimes known as an academic health science centre or system or partnership. It's basically an educational and healthcare institute formed by the grouping of a health professional school, such as a medical school with an affiliated teaching hospital or hospital network. And it can be broader than that, as you'll see. They're really designed to ensure that medical research breakthroughs lead to direct clinical benefit for patients. That, that's the ultimate aim of them it, on, at, at an international level. And as you can see there, there's eight in Australia, 12 in Canada. Um, there's 65 in the US, places like the Mayo Clinic, the Johns Hopkins. So we're part of a very special club, if you like. Um, if you can just move on to the next slide, Nina. Um, so. That's the international brand. In England, we're designated by NIHR and NHS England, and we're asked to support not just research, but cross-partner innovation, encourage industry collaborations, very much to improve inequalities. And our local vision is, is, is there to deliver collaborative health and care research, innovation, and importantly, education and training to improve citizen health, address health inequalities, and generate economic growth. And I've put education and training there in red, not just because it's the focus of today's talk, but because we can't do any of this without having the workforce that we need to deliver it. And often that in the past has been the rate limiting step. And why is the partnership important? Well, hopefully it's obvious that if you've got partners from not just healthcare and education, but in our case from the city council as well, um, mental health, Health Innovation Northeast North Cumbria, you get the synergy which comes from interdisciplinarity. So you bring together people that would not necessarily um, come together and that leads to exciting opportunities. It allows us to leverage exciting opportunities. So yeah, Nina, the next, my last slide is the next slide. And um, these are our partners. So Newcastle Hospitals, Newcastle University, the City Council, um, CNTW and Health Innovation Northeast and North Cumbria, they were all in our original application for designation. And we now have our latest partner, an affiliate, Northumbria University, which brings huge benefits to this partnership, not least in what you're going to hear about today. So that's really all I want to say in terms of background. I'm now going to introduce Nina, who has really been absolutely um, integral to one of the main pillars. I should have said there's two main pillars to end it. There's the research and innovation pillar, which I lead, and then there's the education and workforce pillar, which, which Dave Jones and Nina lead. And Nina's going to focus now on the NHIP Academy, which I think is a really, really special part of NHIP, of benefit, as you all see, to all of our, our partners and beyond. So Nina, over to you. Thank you, John, and thank you to Beth and uh, everybody else who invited uh, us to, to share our work. So, like John says, the NHIP Academy, the Newcastle Health Innovation Partners Training Academy, is the, the training arm um, of 
in HIP. And like Dave said, uh, like uh, John said, um, it was Dave and myself who sort of initially uh, pushed forward and, and proposed the establishment of the NHIP Academy, but also special thanks to Amy and Max. A oh, I can see both Amy and Max, who uh, are now integral in the core team, along also Sharon and Miriam in the office. Um, and Amy and Max have both helped to put the slides together, as will uh, become clear in a minute. So what is NHIP Academy? Uh, we are inclusive health and care, academic career development, uh, sort of grouping hub, uh, focusing on the most promising leaders, very much across disciplines and backgrounds. We have a genuine, real physical presence. We're not just faces on you know, lightning talks. So I don't know how many of you know where the Lovers Lane is. Uh, we are just next to that in the Ridley building. And you're welcome to come and visit any time. There's hot desking, meeting space. Uh, we've got an open door policy. There's a sofa. You're welcome to have a nap there or have a bit of tea and coffee. And, and Amy's saying we've got usually biscuits. So uh, and we are quite, quite well stocked up. So please do stop by, come and say hello um, and, and come and start meeting the team. So what do we mean by inclusive career development for all academic stages? What we really mean is that kind of the whole pathway from um, newly graduates to postdoctoral research experience, PhDs, early postdoctoral research, to kind of further on mid-career and all the way to independence and professorships. And there's three main things that NHIP Academy does. So the way to think about it is we're, we're not kind of running anything on its own, but we're very much the Velcro, we're very much the connectors, we very much help to bring things together across the NHIP partners. And we do that in three specific ways. So probably the most uh, sort of the, the biggest and most visible thing of what we do is we provide guidance, support and intelligence throughout this academic career pathway. I'm very much focused on being the experts and knowing, you know, even before the news necessarily become public, having a really, really good understanding and being able to give quality advice to people across the partners and across the, the system around how to, to, you know, advance your career, how to apply for that next level of fellowship what the different pathways and opportunities might be right for you, taking into account your personal pathway to date, your personal future career ambitions. But we don't just work with individuals and their supervisors. We also very much and increasingly so work across the infrastructure. So thinking about different parts and different sort of units, um, centers within the partners, and how do we help the connections between this in the capacity building space? So as one example, we are the, the hub and the connector to all of our NIHR academic career development leads and try to act as a kind of resource and support for them as they are planning the academic career development activities within the units and the centers. And then the third one, which you know Max can, can give a wave um, and you can maybe put a, a connection in the chat later on, but Max is the person who helps us to really look at data. So until about 12 months ago, we were still at the point where all the partners were looking at their individual data. And if we had uh, applications, be it individual fellowships or infrastructure applications going for funding, we didn't necessarily know what data we had in relation to support for that application. We didn't know what was the, the future trajectories of our fellows, uh, and we didn't have a good sense of what the size and shape of our communities at the different disciplines in the different career stages is. Now with Max on board, we've got some really, really nice data and synthesis across the data, across increasingly across partners coming together as well. So that's what I want to share with you next. So, you know, what is the NHIP um, Academy community? We've got four pillars. Um, the doctors and dentists is our biggest. Um, and the key reason for that is that really the training and the academic career support for doctors and dentists has been happening in Newcastle and been led nationally from Newcastle over two decades. So that's our most established 
longest established pillar. Uh, the palest pink there, or the palest red, shows kind of the size of the community that are looking to apply uh, fellowships, looking to apply for their next state award, that are you know, engaged in, in a variety of our activities. And then you can see the, the numbers of people, the sort of proportions of people on the different parts of that academic um, career trajectory. But the overall community, it's about 175. And this is data from last week. So this is hot uh, of Max's press. Our second biggest pillar is the nursing midwifery AHPs that includes um, psychology, pharmacy, healthcare sciences. And that pillar has been probably going on at increasing scale for about 10 years. So you can see that that pillar is quite substantial in size as well. Our two sort of more uh, recent pillars are methodologists and public health and social care. And what's really exciting about those is that they are growing rapidly. And you can see that actually the pale pink, the overall size of the, the community who are looking to get involved in applying fellowships, developing their careers, is not far behind from the first two pillars. So it will just take a little bit of time for those darker reds to continue to grow as well. And as we look at the national landscape of where the opportunities are, you know, with the doctors and dentists, we're already punching really, really well to all of those national opportunities. With the NMAP plus pillar, we're starting to very much be there as well. But where we've got a lot of opportunity for further growth and where we anticipate further funding opportunities is very much in the methodology, public health and social care. So watch that space. That's looking really, really good. So how do our members connect with us? Um, a lot of this is through what we call career conversations. So this is really just illustrative data, and this will continue to grow as, as Max kind of gets his algorithms running. Um, but in the last 12 to 14 months, Amy alone, um, ha as our academy manager, has had over 140 individual one-to-one -one conversations with people, providing guidance about where to go with your career, how to apply for things, you know, how to navigate that whole landscape. Uh, over 100 people have been coming to our fellows forums. And Max is also now increasingly getting data from our project initiation forums. And the advantage of that is that not everybody knows about NHIP Academy. Not everybody knows that there's, there's support for you. But actually, when we see a project initi initiation form going in, we can pick that up as a fellowship and then we can make contact and we can we can provide support for the applicant and their supervisors as well. Historically, a lot of the, the time we only find out about people when they would be facing what's called uh, their, their kind of mock interview stage. So usually when you apply for national awards, there's a, a, a sort of interview at the end of it that you need to pass and you know before then being shortlisted for the award. Um, and you won't find out about those interviews until sort of two or three weeks before. So we would get a phone call saying, I've got my interview. Can anybody help me? I've heard that you might be able to help me. But actually, at that point, it's often too late to make massive changes or to provide you with that maximum support. And what this process now is doing, that those career conversations are usually happening a good 12 to 18 months before the mock interview stage. So actually, by the time the mock interview comes, by the time your actual fellowship or application interview comes, you've had loads of opportunities, loads of preparation, and then that's not such a big hurdle as it maybe has been in the past. And obviously, over time, as kind of the activity increases um, and as our data capture improves, then we will have more accurate predictions. We can start to add different data points as well. So. Just to kind of give you a little bit of a snapshot about the, the sort of big things that we're particularly proud of in the, in the recent few months. Um, in the pictures, you can some, see some of our, what we call our first. So um, Lorraine Cowley there, who's a, a nurse at Newcastle Hospitals, she was the first nurse awarded the MRC NIHR CARB. And that's that's a really, really big sort of breaking through glass ceiling because no nurse has ever been awarded that award. It's a, a postdoctoral award for existing clinicians and practitioners 
who are looking to build their next stages of academic work. Um, in the similar program, uh, Stuart McPherson was the first clinical academic who, who went to a uh, professor through that pathway. And then um, Felicity, who was the first NIHR Advanced Fellowship Award in Palliative Care nationally. And then James Wason, who many of you know, and I, I've not had a chance to check if, if James is on the call, but James is obviously not our first intern, because uh, James is our NIHR um, research professor and a biostatistician. But what James has been doing has been locally developing and piloting an internship program, which then through collaborations with the, the NIHR methodology incubator, which we also lead from Newcastle, has been then developed into national opportunities and ideas about what can be happening nationally to offer fellowships for methodologists. So what, what we're trying to do, you see that there's an award value over 62 million. So in the last 12 months, uh, that's the, the sort of contribution that the NHIP Academy hub and core team has made to awards uh, in, the, the, in and around the partnership. But we're not just looking at the scale. We're not just looking at how can we do more and more and more. We're very much looking at how can we open up new avenues, new opportunities for those who have maybe not had access to these awards before. Um, and I just wanted to share this slide because this is really, really exciting. And I think this sort of exemplifies some of the work that we have led from Newcastle. So I saw people there popping up, uh, Lisa Robinson and Linda and others, where you know, we've been integral part for the last 10 years in promoting career opportunities, academic progression, funding opportunities for people who come, you know, clinicians or practitioners who come from disciplines or backgrounds where there maybe historically hasn't been a lot of research activity. Um, we've worked really closely with NIHR over the years on this. And we've just been supporting, and there were three um, of us from Newcastle on the funding panel, supporting NIHR to, to sort of see the first round of applications. And, you know, usually, it, let's say a couple of years ago, if we were asking, you know, how many, how many applications do we have going for this round, we would usually have maybe one or two. If we had three, that was quite a big round. We had 10 applications that went into this round uh, and that's the first round of this particular call and that's just that's just amazing so watch this space so now that you've all heard the great things about NHIP Academy you're asking right this sounds brilliant how can I become part of this well the main thing is you know there's no application form you don't need to to sort of sign up for or give your bank details all you need to do is just to get in touch the email address is there do get in touch as soon as you think this is maybe something you would be interested in. You don't need to know what application you're going to put in. You don't need to know who your supervisors are going to be. You don't need to have a specific research project yet. Just get in touch as early as possible. It's helpful if you can indicate when you email to us which of those four pillars you think you might be most aligned to because that just means that you get the most relevant emails and the most relevant invitations. Um, if you are at the point where you think like, OK, I'm putting in my application and I've not heard about the NHIP Academy and I've not known anything about this, then do get in touch with us, with us as soon as possible. And one of the things that we can help people with uh, is also your head of department statement. But we really need a good few weeks sort of support that, a, a lead in for that. So support the community, become part of it, just get actively involved. John, I think I'll hand back to you and I'll try to figure out how I stop sharing. Thank you so much, Nina. That was brilliant. Um, uh, uh, to, you know, totally exemplary. And as you said on, on your penultimate slide, we're, we're, we're chartering on charter territory now with, with some of the work that you're doing. So the, the, the floor's open now um, to questions. You can either ask your questions directly, although I'm going to struggle to see your hands. So you might just need to um, uh, shout or put questions in the chat if you prefer to do it that way. And I'll read them out. But um, yeah, please let us have your questions. 
What what's with waiting, Nina? Something about the interdisciplinarity, because that's kind of where I've been thinking quite a lot recently. It, increasingly, we see funding calls which kind of stretch you a little bit. They're not quite in the traditional areas, perhaps, of, of what we would have you know, applied to in the past. What, what's your views on that? How do we how do we get people thinking in that slightly outside the box way? Um, yeah, I, I think that's absolutely right. And I think there's there's almost so much activity happening in that space now. You know, I'm, I'm looking at Amy as well. So do chip in, Amy, if you want to add anything. But just if I give some sort of headline things uh, from the top of my head, the team, the NIHR Team Science Awards, I think are going in this week or have just gone in. And I've had a chance to get a glimpse of a couple of those. And that's just, it's just blown my mind away about, you know, how we can have people relatively junior career stages as well, coming together, mixed teams coming together maybe for the first time. And that's not easy that's quite challenging so NIHR is recognizing that and is trying to put together kind of a much more supportive pathway around that and, and I'm you know Amy and I have talked about that we might get one of the fellows forum sessions uh, built around that to really share around experiences I think the fellows forum in itself is another example of this and I've had discussions with a couple of the, the members where if we're just looking at activity within the pillar, we're not quite the critical mass, even for the doctors and the dentists. You know, you would think that if you've got nearly 200 people, that's enough to do an active community. But actually, it does take quite a sizable number of people to keep that diversity and new ideas and make it interesting. And I think that's what the Fellows Forum is, is offering. You know, we've got people coming forward who say, I would like to do a session on X. Are there anybody else who's, who, who are interested in that? And that really brings people from different backgrounds, different disciplines around research and clinical topics together as well, which I think is, is really powerful. Um, there was a third thing I was going to say, but I've now forgotten. Oh yeah, that's about supervisory teams. So that's where I think the NHIP Academy really can come to its own and where we could probably use us a bit more still is when people are thinking putting together their supervisory teams you know you're allowed usually up to four supervisors so don't just pick four who are the obvious candidates that you're already working with and who are sitting in the, the four tables around you you know keep at least one of those spots free and go and speak to amy or myself or you know dave and say, I'm working in this space, who would you suggest that I, I ask to supervise me, who can provide me new challenge, who can make us think in a little bit different way. And that's an opportunity for whole of that team, for the supervisors as well. So yeah, those are probably sort of top headline things that, yeah. but I don't know, Amy, do you want to add anything? No, I think you've covered it, Nina. And there's been a few calls recently asking for, you know, a, I'm thinking of mental health and social care, where they want people who haven't previously done a lot of work in mental health to move into this area, say for social care. So there's a lot of opportunity to move into new areas. Yeah. Right. Any, any other any questions out there? I, I, thought I can keep asking. I've got loads of questions, but, uh, um, uh, but it'd be good if some of the audience had questions. I'll, I'll ask another one then, Nina. I mean, in, in my partly my in-hit role, but also my trust AMD role, I'm really, really keen that new people come into research. And, and in fact, it's been one of the most pleasurable experiences that I, I can, you know, I'll, I'll be in medical directors group and say there's a call out on how we can help the, the workforce you know capacity issues that we're having and, and actually suddenly the room lights up because people will say I didn't think you could do research in that area that's what I do every day and I think that's a real opportunity to just and I I mean you know Linda's team and other teams have been doing great work over the years for sure but there are still they're not pockets there's big communities out there who just don't think of themselves as researchers and my experience is that You've gone on mute, John. Yeah, there's there's big big communities out there who 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 
don't see themselves as researchers. And in my in my experience, they actually have better ideas than some of the established researchers because it's their day job. They just don't realise that they're their research questions. And I think that's a fantastic community to be picking future fellows from if that's what they want to do. But the question is, how do we make sure they're aware of those opportunities? I mean, that's why we have these the, these talks, but we still somehow need to get the message out there. Uh, I suppose the thing is people on this call do spread the message to your to your to your communities and teams. Um, yeah, I, I completely agree with you, John. And I think it's quite interesting. You know, you, years have gone by and it's almost like the workforce and the research or the workforce and the clinical academic have been, you know, two separate things that everybody acknowledges are kind of connected, but we pretend that they're two separate things. And in the last three weeks, I can't go a day by that workforce doesn't come up. And I think that's really interesting. And Annette Hand, who leads uh, or, you know, co-leads with other colleagues, the nursing midwifery AHP plus pillar. Annette and I had a long conversation about this just last week um, because there's going to be, I think in the next 18 months, we see a lot of initiatives and a lot of work in this space. Mm -hmm. And I think probably ways that will completely transform the landscape because a lot of the momentum initiatives will start to come together, you know, from the very sort of top level of who can be a PI, a site PI for a medicines trial to what are we doing to bring on board and to open doors for research thinking and experience for people who are absolutely brand new to their kind of clinical practitioner roles. There's a lot of stuff happening in the methodology space. Uh, and I, yeah, I think I don't have a crystal ball to know exactly how it will evolve. But if I was to make a guess, I think next 18 months is, is going to really start to see a transformation of all of these activities coming together. And I think maybe having further conversations about that would be really useful. It might be quite nice if we could host one of the fellows forums, at, you know, out amongst me you know, maybe partner with one of our very very frontline junior practitioners maybe partner with the research delivery network colleagues and jointly host something in this this space and that might be quite interesting yeah i agree i agree and, and you know the other thing i would say is now there's there's sort of eight boards in in, in the trust that actually makes makes the whole thing more tractable because you can also almost have a roadshow around the boards to let people know what's going on, as well as these sorts of events. I think there's lots of opportunities. Any any final questions from anybody? Because we are running out of time. Um, um, I'm sure Nina will be happy to accept questions afterwards in if you wanted to email her or, or email Amy. Um, Definitely. I, and, and maybe just to emphasize that, it, you know, NHIP includes at the local authority, so the city council as well. So we are very much talking about public health, social care. You know, they, this is a very inclusive club. Yep. Oh, great. Absolutely. Well, look, it's just turned 12.30, so I think our time's up. So Nina, again, thank you ever so much. And thanks to the team for hosting this and, and obviously your own team for supporting you and Dave in the fantastic work you're doing. And um, I hope, you know, I, I hope we you're kept even busier next time you'll have 15 <laughs> applications in, not just 10. So, so, <laughs> um, and expand you so your much. Team. yeah. OK, thanks, everybody. Thank nice you. To see you all. Thanks for everybody. joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.